morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the next installment of Lumix Live. This is a bit of a more special uh, uh, event than we've normally run. Uh, as most of you that have been joining us weekly know, we're normally going live on Thursdays at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but today we're doing uh, a bit of a different kind of stream than we've normally done. We're not focusing on gear, we're not talking about you know, Lumix cameras and things like that. We're focusing on photojournalism and, uh, you know, talking with, with, with two photojournalists, uh, photographers that, you know, can really bring some insight into those that are looking at, at this kind of photography as something that you may want to get into. Uh, given conversations that I know I've had with a number of photographers who are, either in situations where weddings and events may be on, you know, a bit of a hiatus for now or looking at ways to use their photography for the good. Um, we wanted to take this time to, you know, kind of give this, this style of photography, uh, you know, kind of a, a platform to, you know, really dive into the importance of image making and the importance of, of photography in the current times globally. So this week I am joined by Frederick and Olivier and we're gonna have you know really a, 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 an awesome conversation here. Uh, so if you guys are new to Lumix Live and you have questions for either myself or uh, our guests, make sure to tag at Lumix Cameras in the YouTube chat, whether that's below or to the side of the uh, screen that you're on. Uh, and we will be addressing them throughout the stream. Uh, I also have uh, some of our team members. Uh, Mark Toll is in the comment section monitoring as well. So if we don't get to your question live on air, we will have that question uh, answered to the best that we can uh, in chat for you. Um, as a just note for those that are here uh, about gear and tech, we do not have product announcements or conversations like that uh, for this stream right now. So unfortunately, if you're looking for that info, there's nothing really to talk about from there, um, but stick around. Uh, this is gonna be a really fun topic, um, a very serious topic, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So with that, I want to introduce Frederick and Olivier. How's it going, guys? Hi. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's going great on this side. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So. Um, can you guys give a little bit of an introduction as to uh, you know who you guys are, what got you into photography, and um, you know we'll we'll, we'll uh, start there. Um, let's start with you, Olivier. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for my accent. I'm French. Uh, I'm right now in Paris. It's uh, seven in the evening right now, and uh, I'm a photojournalist. Uh, the kind of photojournalist you can imagine, probably wearing a helmet and. Uh, bulletproof stuff and everything and uh, I really specialized in uh, you know those kind of demonstrations that turns very weird um, there is those kind of demonstration in Paris every week in a weekend with a Molotov cocktail and fight with uh, the police and everything so we can talk about that I know that right now in the United States you have some trouble so I'd be very happy to talk about this how to uh, preserve yourself and uh, shot the right picture at this moment, okay, in safety and in the respect of the information. And uh, I have been photojournalist for five years right now. Um, I don't know to put myself in a box, actually. Uh, we are not really photojournalists. We are just photographers, just like you, probably. Everybody is a photographer. You have a camera, you can take some pictures, so you can be anything, okay, and photojournalists also by the way so um i do art i do sports i do anything that i can do with my camera anything that i like so we can talk about that also okay and all those disciplines um come to feed your uh, ability to be a photojournalist okay every kind of disciplines in photography uh just feed the other disciplines so don't put some limit in your head um this is what I want to say. I'm just, I'm not just a photojournalist. I'm just a photographer. So this is why I'm here to talk with you because you're also a photographer. And yes, we are going to talk about this particular discipline of photojournalism. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, now I, uh, Frederick, those, yes. those that, that, that don't know the, uh, uh, uh Twip network, let's uh, give them a little introduction to who you are. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. And first of all, thank you, uh, Sean, for having me on. And it's a, it's an honor to be on with Olivier uh, talking about this stuff uh, with someone who uh, dodges Molotov cocktails and that sort of thing. So <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to ask questions. Uh, but yeah, This Week in Photo, just real quick, is the, is the podcast slash podcast network that I run. It's all about photography. It's a school. It's uh, a community, et cetera, et cetera. And it's 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 sort of my ship in the bottle, right? So I, I, it's my hobby and my profession, and it keeps the lights on around here. Um, <laughs> but in terms of my, my background in photography, I was uh, a, a photojournalist, actually started off as just a, a photographer, base level photographer in the United States Air Force, um, and then became a photojournalist, a combat photojournalist in the Air Force. I did eight years in the Air Force learning everything from what is a photon <laughs> all the way up to you know uh nesting layers in photoshop right so it's uh it w it's been an exciting sort of career and just sort of just to set the stage in the context of this this conversation about photojournalism um in the military uh at least when i was in the military things change all the time but when i was in the military the base level photographer my, my first tour of duty was at yokota air base in tokyo and the the duty of the organization that is the audiovisual squadron was to support the base for anything that it needed photographically or visually right so think of a base a base as a small city a self-contained city so you're the photographers for that so that meant we had to be proficient and excel at everything from sports photography to investigative photography to uh, forensic photography. We had to know it all, right, and, and be able to deliver product on that. The next level up from base level photographer is kind of what Olivier is, right, to be deployed and be out in the field and capturing action and deployments and, and that sort of thing. So. You know, it, it, the result of that for me was having a really solid foundation in photography from, you know, the film days all the way up till now. And then transitioning that, of course, into chatting about it with photographers and educating and building community around photography of uh, photography. So that's that's kind of where I am now. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So so I mean, you know, that's 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 a really cool, you know, spread of of background for for you guys um yeah so when we talk about photojournalism you know that's we, we we were talking before the stream you know it's kind of a you know somewhat nebulous term you know people kind of slap photojournalism on on any kind of documentary but um i'm curious what your your kind of definitions or or ideas of a photojournalist are um, let's start with you, Frederick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a that's a really really good question. So photojournalism, I think, is probably one of the most misunderstood genres of photography, right? Because, it, like, you, you if you look at it through the lens today, uh, everyone's a photojournalist that has a smartphone, right? Because photojournalism at its most basic is just journaling something through photos, telling a story through photos and that's what photojournalism photojournalism is is just telling stories using photography back in the day it would there were the barriers to entry to do that were really high you had to have a really good camera and really good glass on that camera and have access to different locations where you could make and it was important to tell those stories um today everyone's doing that and telling stories as a result the world has changed because of group photojournalism right if you think about it like even the George Floyd video, right? We wouldn't have known about that had it not been for photography or videography. We wouldn't have known about Rodney King. We wouldn't know all kinds of stuff. We wouldn't have known. even SpaceX launches. We wouldn't know about exactly. that because we need visual imagery to tell us that. And that's what photojournalism is at the high level, at the very minute level. And maybe minute is not even the right word, but at, at a more consumer level, it's, you know, you start moving into street photography and just, you know, taking photos, walking around. Street photography is a form of photojournalism. You're telling stories about a particular area or a particular, um, you know, niche in that in that area, but you're using images to tell that story. So I think, I think you know, to answer the question really quickly, photojournalism is just, 
from my perspective, is just telling stories using photography. The professional photojournalism, I think, is telling those important stories that would not have been told had it not been for you. You know, injecting yourself and your talent and your gear into a situation to tell a story about something that if you had not done that, that story would not be told and, you know, therefore not acted on. So that that's that's the importance of photojournalism for me, at least. Cool. Cool. Yeah. No, that's 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 awesome. Um, now, uh, what about you, Olivier? What how how do you define photojournalism for yourself? Right. I totally agree with uh, Frederick. Actually, it's a, you know, you know that uh, it's a it's a box. Actually, okay. Photojournalism. Photojournalist is a is a guy. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just uh, a status to uh, you know pay your tax. Actually, <laughs> the, the administration love boxes, so you have a, you are a wedding photographer or a photojournalist or something like that. The fact is. Every guy who get a camera is a photographer, an artist, and a photojournalist also. As said Frederick, each time you take a picture of the time passing on this planet, you are the witness of this planet, okay? And this is the point of uh, journalism, actually, being a witness of something and share what you saw with other people. Then those people can feed their mind and uh, um, have a vision, a global vision of what's happened right now in this planet and right now and in the past and maybe in the future also because the stuff that happens right now will define the future and in the future the, the stuff that happens right now will be you know part of your past so you know it's a power to be a photographer really you can do uh, you know I, I love this photographer like uh, uh, maybe Frederick knows it because uh, he, he was a combat photographer also and uh, it's Osfas and this guy changed the history he takes some picture in yeah. Vietnam came back with it and changed the history forever he made the yeah. first page of life magazine and then this picture is in the same time journalism art and uh, you know everything all the disciplines are in those pictures you know so yeah. is he a, a journalist is he a hero is he yeah. uh, an artist nobody can say okay so don't put the people in the box you want to make some picture take your camera take picture and if you take the right picture then you can change the world so don't put yourself in a box but this yeah. is the yeah. same things for all part of your life actually if you put yourself in a box you will stay in a box forever actually and you won't change nothing right so we are photojournalists because we pay tax as a photojournalist you know and maybe <laughs> exactly. because we have a public <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know and and that's 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 a really good point you know one of the one of the things that that um, I think you you touched on Frederick too was that you know photojournalism is often misunderstood you know that that act of documenting the world around you documenting what you see being a participant in history um, that's that's something now I think is even more critical than it was a couple of years ago there are there are so many things going on in the world and information should be shared you know that fact should be shared um, I know uh, when when you and I were talking Olivier about it it's there's a very unique thing about photography that a lot of other art forms and communication methods don't have and that's that it, it can be considered a universal language you know right a, a photograph is is a documentation of what was there at that moment so being able to cross language barriers is is an amazing thing with imagery and i i applaud those that that can actually take the the responsibility of when we talk about you know kind of that more serious level of photojournalism so like combat photographers um you know a active photographers in in dangerous current situations by by being able to manage you know true true um neutrality in 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 their capture and 
that kind of leads to one of the questions that that I've gotten a lot when we were kind of prepping for this this um, event, and that's so when when you go out into the field, if you're on an assignment or even if you're not on an assignment and you are just documenting a situation like a riot or a protest or in combat, how do you maintain that neutrality in your capturing of, of an event? Um, start with you, uh, Olivier. Um, I think it's impossible. Because, you know, your vision of the world is uh, built by, uh, till you, 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 you're born, till right now. Depends on your parents, your education, your religion, where you live, uh, all the, uh, uh, you know, stuff that happens in your life, okay? So you build your own vision. If you give a camera to uh, 7 billion of people and tell them to take a picture of uh, a tree, for example, you're going to have 7 billion of trees taken at the same time, you know? So it's very impossible to be totally uh, um, away from the subject, you know? You're engaged because you're in the middle of that and you look at this with your eyes. And uh, a photography is a translation of what you get in your mind. This is the miracle of photography, by the way, actually. This is the only, uh, a camera is the only tools we got right now to read inside the head or the mind of people. Uh, I did an experience once and uh, uh, I, I went with Lumex in uh, South Africa, by the way, in, in, uh, in a township. Okay, Those people are poor and they don't even know what is a camera. Okay, And I had tons of camera with me because I was there for, for testing this camera. And, uh, I was taking pictures and there was a lot of children around me, okay? So I decided to give a, a camera to those children and those children took some picture. And I can tell you, those pictures that I extract for the camera when I derish the stuff was one of, of the most incredible picture I never made because somebody else made it actually. And it's totally different point of view. You, you, as an adult, you look at the world uh, from the top to the bottom or in the same level, okay? And the kids look at the world uh, from the, the, the bottom to the top, actually. And it's another point of view, okay? This is their point of view. And when you are in a riot or a demonstration and everything, you know exactly why you're there because you know the context, you know everything. And you have a kind of sensibilities around the context, okay? Um, because you're a human, so you have a politic point of view anyway. So when you arrive on those riots and everything, you have your own point of view and you look at the subject from the bottom to the top on the same level or whatever it is, because it's you actually. So it's barely impossible to be totally um, um, objective from mm -hmm. the subject you know what I mean? so it's impossible so don't think about it just take your camera and take the some picture you know um robert kappa for example he was in normandy on d-day okay by the way he was not a photojournalist i i want to um make a, a, a just take it apart photojournalism today it's a statue because um, the freedom doesn't exist, or less and less, actually. If you want to be legitimate in a riot or in a demonstration, you have to be photographed. And if you are not, if you can't present a card or anything, you could be arrested, you can be molested, you can be beaten, you can be anything, you know? Because you can be a simple citizen in, in the middle of it and take some pictures. This is your right, right? You know? But you can't do that. Actually, you have to be a photojournalist to be accepted by um, the police, by the protesters, by, you know. So this is quite symptomatic. But Robert Kappa, for example, was not a photojournalist. He was just a photographer. And he said, OK, I jumped on a boat and I go in Normandy this day because someone needs to be a witness of that. Unless nobody will remember what's happened at this time. And he did it. He takes this picture and it was photojournalism, photojournalism at this time and no it's art so you know that there is no specific photography 
there is just photography. You take your camera and you take those pictures. And if you look very close at the picture of Robert Coppa at this time, you can you can feel what he, what was his uh, um, uh, statue at this moment. You can feel the fear. You can feel the wet. You can feel anything. So it's not uh, very uh, you know it's not a photography that is detached from the subject you know it's a very implicated photography but it's a photography that changed the vision of this particular moment and this is the point of photography just take your camera and take some picture and don't think about it yeah. by the way if you think about it you you, you never go to combat zone like frederick or you never go <laughs> in the real you know? so don't think about it just take picture if you if you have to do that exactly yeah. exactly that's 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 such a, a amazing point is that you know just capture and don't put yourself in that box of you know what what you want to be categorized as as a photographer we're all photographers or we're all videographers and we're all capturing the world in front of us and you, you, know, you, you bring a point of view actually and each point of view is great it's like when you look at multiple photographies of uh, an event it's just like seeing this event with a 380 camera, okay? If you add all those point of view, you have a global vision of the event, okay? Yeah. If, if you have just the same point of view, you're gonna have the point of view of the same thing with the same point of view as everybody. No, you have to construct your, um, um, you know, you know what I mean, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's very really important that people bring what they are when they take a photography. They bring their point yeah. of view and they bring the world. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. And, and so, so Frederick, what? Yeah. Pretty much the, 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 the same question, you know, trying to, I guess I'll, I'll uh, rephrase it this time. <laughs> so sure. instead, of, instead of maintaining neutrality, how, how would you go about managing your, you, you know, the, the, the inset point of view? Uh, like like on an assignment for for capturing the world there if it's say for time or life or one of the magazines yeah yeah that, that's a that's a that's a really good and poignant question especially for for right now so that's that's and it's almost unanswerable it's been trying people have been trying to answer that question forever it's like how do you how do you participate and cover something that that you may have your own biases about but that's not your job to communicate you know maybe it's not your job to communicate your particular biases about a situation how do you go in there and not affect the situation i remember when um I mean, this reminds me of a blog post i wrote years ago it was called uh light or flight or flight or light and it was tackling this question is like as a as a photographer it, it posited the question as a photographer if you're presented with a situation where you could either engage in that situation and become part of the story and help it to a positive outcome, you know, i.e. someone's, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, someone famous there and you can either take their picture or, and get paid for it and tell the story of what happened today to millions, or you could help that person and change the outcome of the story. As a photographer, what is your responsibility? Then what it, where it nets out as most people say you're a human first, so you help the other human and move forward. But it was surprising that a large a large percentage of the people that responded to that said, "You have a job to do. You have a photo you're a photographer. You need to cover that, or else it didn't happen. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, it didn't make a sound. So it's important that the story gets told. So." It's it's an unanswerable question. You fast forward to today, uh, like Sean, you mentioned, you know, the George Floyd protest riots, you know, the civil unrest that's going on around that situation. And then as a black photographer, how do you go in to document a situation like that without becoming part of the situation or yeah. influencing the situation or going in and having, you know, a point of view and showing this group as or vilifying this group versus that group, you know, vice versa. How do you do that? And there is, there's no one right answer to do that. You just have to, like, like uh, Olivier said, you got to go in there, you know, and have a, you know, the 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 panoramic view of the world and capture, capture stuff, 
right? What you yeah. share is up to you because that's the other part of it. You could capture and tell a story in 15 million different ways with 15 million different biases just based on the kinds of photos that you share, even how you process those photos, right? So it, it, at the end of it, it's up to it's up to the photographer to to point that arrow in the direction that he wants that story to be told but it's there's no one right answer i think you know for me going into a situation i look at stories like you know early on uh in i think it was in minnesota where uh cnn the cnn news crew got arrested right and they're like no we're cnn we're not we're not doing anything we're, and they arrested them anyway and that that is and, and that's a, a really good illustration of the dangers of photojournalism and putting yourself in there and you know especially if you go in with the expectation that hey i have this awesome expensive camera with me of course they're going to assume that i am not part of what's going on here you can't make that assumption you have to go in with your guard up at all times and make the assumption kind of like like we were talking about before we started recording it's kind of like being on a motorcycle you have to make the assumption yep. that everyone on the road is out to get you, right? That's how exactly. that's, that's how you survive. And same in photojournalism <laughs> and photography. Make the assumption that everyone's hostile and you need to just do your job, i.e. ride your bike or take pictures, but watch your back and don't be stupid. So, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a hard question to ask, but I think it's a question that definitely needs to be talked about, Sean. Yeah, yeah, and and I th that kind of I think segues right into to kind of you know given given obviously the the circumstances in the world with the protests, the riot, with the current pandemic going on. There's a lot of photographers that I, I talk to and and are vocal online that are are trying to branch out of what their normals are and they want to part you know actually be participants in change in documenting the world around them and a lot of that goes into like you said because everyone's got a camera whether it's your phone or, or an actual camera everyone has the ability to document the world and share what's happening in in front of them so when it comes to just picking up and going into, say, a protest that could be potentially violent, that, you know, obviously, if you look at the news across the board, um, you know, the recent protests across the board have, in a lot of areas, become a little more heated than just totally peaceful protests. What advice would you guys give to someone who may have never been in a situation like that and is kind of just walking into it um, from either a safety perspective or just things to look out for. Um, let's start with you, Frederick, on this one. Yeah, that, that again, that's a tough one. You're a tough <laughs> interviewer, Sean. <Yeah. laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> you take taking notes, how to interview people by Sean Robbins. Uh, but yeah, it's... You know, it, again, no, I hate to, to, to sound like a cop out, but there's there's no one right answer for that because it depends on the motivation of that person. Like, why are you, or, examine your motivation. So let's take one vignette. So you're in, you know, insert town that's having protests that, you know, may, for a variety of reasons, may turn violent or they may not, you know, but you don't know. At the end of the day, you want to get back to your daughter, right? And you want to you want to have pictures in order to share. That's the whole point. So, I think you have to a look and examine your motivations for going out there and documenting. Is it just because you want to say that I was there? You are you just trying to get images to share on social media to you know to boost up your social cred? Are you doing this because this this town that you're in needs to be shown for what it is or you know what it isn't? You know you want to tell that story and that's that's your intrinsic motivation. I think you have to examine your motivation and then weigh that motivation against the risks of going out there because there's always a risk, right? I mean, there's a risk, and even when all this stuff isn't going on, there's a risk. There's exactly. a, if you have to weigh the motivations of, you know, uh, can I risk getting, you know, uh, caught up with the police or with other, with other demonstrators slash protesters, the risk of catching COVID-19 if I go out there and assemble with these people that are out there, is that risk of going to get those photos worth potentially bringing COVID back to your family or getting hurt while you're out there? So. You have to make that decision. Once you've made the decision to go out there, like I said before, 
360 degree vision around your head, you know, and watching what you're doing. It used to be back in the day that you could just put a press pass on and that was the press pass, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, a Scotty vest, you know, with some stuff in it and your camera and a ratty hat was all you needed to prove that you were a photographer. Not so much these days. Cause like, you know, we we're talking before everyone's a photographer these days. So there's no easy way to say that you're press. Even if you put a shirt on that says press on it, that doesn't mean anything. So you, you have to go out there with the assumption that, that, uh, things are out to get you and and operate from that perspective and that goes for anything like if you're if you decide that you want to do a story about you know homelessness in los angeles california and you get on a plane you go to go to la you still need to have 360 degree vision around you to make sure that you're not in harm's way you need to not be an idiot right because i we did a story a while back about these two uh tourists that went to a uh, sort of skid, a skid Row area in LA to specifically take photos and do a street photography project on homelessness in Los Angeles. They took a photo of someone that was having a bad day and he proceeded to murder one of the people, right? So, yeah, you know, yeah, then that was an innocuous day, right? So yeah. don't be stupid. Be respectful of people and others around you. Examine your motivations for going out there in the first place and weigh your motivations versus the potential risk and danger and the potential those photos or getting those photos could have on the rest of your life, you know? So think about that stuff before you go out there and then go out there and do the shots, right? So don't, you know, to, to draw a circle around what Olivier was saying, you know, in the end, you're 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 the eyewitness, right? So your job is not to look at you know and participate in the commissioning of an event. Your your job is to be an eyewitness to the millions of or billions of people that couldn't be there to see it for themselves. So if you look at it through that lens, you know, pardon the pun, you look at it through that lens, then it's okay. If I want to tell people what's going on here, how would I tell the story? Okay, there's something over there that kind of draws a circle around what's happening. Boom, 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 and then you know proceed like that. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 awesome. Um, I mean, that's 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 I think one of the better kind of guidances that I've that I've heard with a lot of it. Um, now, mm -hmm. what about you, um, Olivier? I know being an active you know, photographer that, that is also a photojournalist and, and, and around that, what, what advice would you give now, you know, knowing that for those that, that have just joined, we're, we're talking about photojournalism and we have two very unique perspectives here. Um, Frederick being based in the United States, Olivier being based in Paris and Europe, there's different challenges across, uh, across the world on, on what you may run into. And I'm curious, Olivier, what your um, suggestions and advice would be for someone who wants to get into this or go out and photograph, you know, maybe not in the United States, but maybe in Europe, Paris. Uh, yeah. There, there is a, you know, universal value. And uh, Frederick just talked about it. You have to be respectful of everybody you are going to interact with. Okay, this is very important. Um, you know, for example, um, not to talk about just rioting and everything. Uh, I've been in Benin in Africa and uh, in a little town. Um, it's uh, a town on the, on the lake and it's very um, exclusive. Uh, nobody can enter in because they um, believe in voodoo, you know, so it's very complicated to take some picture of it. And uh, you can just arrive there and take a picture of those people. You have to respect uh, their culture, what they are. You have to understand their culture. And so you can start a shooting just because you have a camera. You have to be, uh, you have to collect information. You have to um, assume that you have a good, um, you know, uh, how can I say that? You, you, you know these stories, the culture and everything. You, you, have to, yeah. you have to be part of your project, you know? But uh, this is a difficulty. You, you have to be part of the project, but you have to be uh, out of the project because you are a witness, you know? You don't have to interact with the people. If they know that you're here, 
they won't act natural. Um, the, the, the feeling will change. You can have some, um, you know, aggressivities and everything. So it's very difficult. So be prepared to be very respectful. If you can take a picture, don't take the picture. If you see that the, the guy in front of you or the subject of the group of person are not ready to, to accept the, 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 the fact that you are going to take a picture of them, you just don't take it, actually. We have this yeah. problem in the real thing in Paris. Those uh, uh, people, the, the black blocks, the, the people wearing black uh, clothes, and they are very, very violent in, um, in those uh, demonstrations. I work with them for five years right now, and uh, there is rules. They're not written. You have to um, get the right knowledge, and uh, you have to build it day after day so i know that i have to be always on the back of those people not taking the picture of their face because the police could use it against them so this is the rules but it's not written you have to be very aware of that and to be very aware if you have an advice be respectful that's true uh, be sure that you know exactly the context where you you are going to work with uh social context political context on everything you have to be very aware of it and if you can fight someone who knows exactly the context and everything, someone who has the experience, just walk with him the first day, you know, because, you know, there is multiple stuff. Yeah. When you are in a riot, you have to be aware of um, how the, the police will react, you know. Uh, you have to be sure to have some good contact in the police, because if you get arrested, if you get uh, wounded if you get you may need those people whatever you think about it okay but be sure that you are very friendly with the protester or so that you have good contact in the protester in the violent protester because if you need to have a problem with someone it's probably with those people so you have to be well integrated in those group of people they might know you so you have to introduce you it's a very long term a job actually I, i've been working for five years with those people okay and uh no i'm well integrated i don't frederick said you have to be aware 380 degrees and that's true because when people arrive with tools and they start to uh um, use you know uh so the banks or uh, trees wood stuff or everything to throw it on the police you have to be aware of everything because it could be very dangerous. I've been wounded three times, uh, two times by the pol uh, three times by the police, by the way. So two times with the uh, LDB40. I don't know if you know that in the United States. It's a, a ball launcher, oh, like okay. a, a flash ball. Yeah, uh, oh, flashbang. flashbang. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on the legs. Legs, it's yeah. uh, part of your of your body that you can protect, actually. You know, the, the, there is no way to protect it. You can protect your chest, you can protect everything, but not the legs. So the legs, I've been warning with it, and one time with a grenade, and I, I, I have been very bad injured. So you have to be very um, attentive to uh, everything. You have to get some good contacts, because if you are in trouble, you need to count on somebody. The best way is to work with another journalist, keep an eye on each other, okay? And uh, wearing the right tools. And uh, Frederick can talk about it because I saw a picture of him wearing helmets and everything. That kind of stuff, you can find it uh, in the surplus or in, a, you know, in the army uh, shops and everything. So don't hesitate to wear the right tools because to protect you, first of everything you get to be protected, okay? That's right. and the respect of the people and don't take part on anything okay don't take part don't grab something on the floor uh, be very attentive to um the, the the police also and uh it's very difficult the best way is to know someone who knows exactly what he does and ask him to work with him for a few demonstrations and just keep with him just uh, Th yeah. There is no receipt, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. To talk about me, I just jumped in the street one day and I said, okay, I, I, I have a camera and I take some picture. And uh, I did it. This is the wrong way to do it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. 
say it's it just it's a dangerous game but you you have to be very 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 careful please be careful yeah I, one of the things that you i would throw in there just to piggyback on olivier is the you know around the danger the sort of topic is yeah you may go in thinking that you're I'm a, I'm a photographer and you know of course i'm just here to document and tell the story and you know i'm not part of either side i'm just you know i'm, I'm switzerland i'm in the middle um but you have to take into account that maybe you know someone there doesn't want the story told of what's going on there which makes you a target at that point so you know whoever <laughs> for whatever reasons you know that story may what you know what happens in vegas stays in vegas they may want that to be what's going on there uh, which means it's easy just to get rid of you to reduce the chances of that story getting out so keep that keep that in mind as well i think and, and at this point it's particularly true because the protesters mm -hmm. are reorting right now they don't want you to take picture of them and the policemen you know what policemen does. So they don't want to, right. you to take picture of it. So you have enemies everywhere. So try to find some friends in those enemies. You need it. Okay? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And <laughs> no, this... Six, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's I think, a, like, truly amazing advice is that, you know, that, that, that concept of, of quote-unquote neutrality is is basically like that's that's the, the the neutrality that you need is that understanding both sides and knowing the risks on either side knowing you know maybe the motives on both sides where where you fall in that equation and doing everything you can to protect yourself i know that that's that's a common thought process when you go through a lot of different um you know aspects in the world you know being taught how to drive a car, being taught how to ride a motorcycle, being taught how to properly handle a firearm. Ultimately, a lot of the the training that goes into those kinds of, of activities are all that, you know, self-preservation and preservation of life is kind of your ultimate goal, a win-win situation where you get to go home at the end and you're unharmed, unscathed, that kind of thing. That that I think falls very comfortably in this this style as well that you know if if you have the risk of being harmed y you really have to understand those risks when you're going into this kind of of situation it's not something i think to take lightly and i think a lot of people do kind of go into it maybe woefully undereducated in in what the potential yeah. risks are um and that's that's that kind of double-edged sword of the fact that everyone has a camera and everyone can be a photographer. There's still a lot of responsibility that comes with actually having experience in it and and understanding what you're doing. So the 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 points you guys made, I think, are 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 some of the most core ones. There is being respectful. That universal concept across the board is be respectful to the people around you, even if you don't agree with them. You know, be be respectful. Um, there are areas if I can. Uh, yeah, go if for it. You misbehave as a photojournalist in those situations, you are going to uh, place in danger all the other photographer around you uh, because you can uh, create a confusion. You know what I mean? Um, if if a photographer. Um, get mad because he's been wounded or something like that. He grab a, a rock and throw it on the protester and everything. Immediately, all the photographer will be uh, considered like him, you know. So if you are not well prepared, you 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 place in danger every other photographer around you in the in the protest. Okay, so yeah. uh, in the demonstration, so you have to be very careful of that. Okay, your responsibility. Yeah. Is the responsibility of everybody else okay so exactly you know Sean, we've yeah. been we've been we've been told sorry i was gonna say real quick we've yeah. we've been told that you know or a lot of photographers have been told that hey you know your camera is your passport into situations where you ordinarily wouldn't have been able to get access to but because you have a passport you now have the the uh ticket to sort of get into different cultures and different situations where you without the camera would be suspect right so now the if you if you overlay that guidance on what 
we're talking about in this conversation, it doesn't work, right? Because yeah, exactly. your, your passport, yeah, your passport is, a, is yeah, it's your camera is a passport to like, okay, I want to go take some landscape photos on Maui or something. But when you're, when you're potentially in harm's way, that, that whole guidance falls apart. So I think it's important for people to get it that just because you have a camera or an expensive looking lens on a camera, that is not licensed. The fee that you paid for that lens is not licensed for you to go wherever the heck you want on the planet. You still have to be, you know, you gotta, you gotta add the common sense to the dollars that you paid for that lens. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You know, there, there's, there is great responsibility, not to sound, you know, cliche with it, but there is great responsibility in being a photographer, try, you know, really across the board, no matter what discipline you're, you're, you're practicing, photography is a, a very powerful tool, whether it's for documenting, uh, you know, a birthday or a wedding or an event or doing corporate headshots to Documenting civil unrest, documenting, you know, just as you said, uh, Olivier, documenting a village where it's it's not culturally accepted there. There's so much you need to, to understand when when you go out and capture an image. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So you, you have to be put, just like a normal job. I mean, you know, it's not a miracle. You, you know, as, the, as said Frederick, it's not a passport. You know, you have a responsibility. If you have a project to translate something, okay, you have to be uh, sure to understand the subject, you know? So it's a lot of, you have to read a lot. You have to uh, be very educated. You have to know all the culture you want to interact with. You know, we talked about uh, what's happening in the United States right now. And if I choose to come to shoot what's happening in the United States, I have to be sure that I understand everything about it. Uh, the context, the history of the country, and uh, of course, um, the law are not the same in France than in the United States. Okay, The way the, the police uh, interact with uh, the demonstration is not the same in France than in the United States. And I have to be very aware about that if I don't want to be uh, pain in the ass for the police or pain in the ass for the protester. or you know, you are a witness, you're not an actor of that, okay? So you have to be very aware of everything to be there, but not, you know? You have yep. to be invisible, okay? Yep. So yeah. it's an yep. interesting, interesting job, and uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what, Sean, hey, you know, one of the, 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 the baggage, if you want to, for lack of a better phrase, that you bring into a situation, especially like Olivia saying, like in the in in the context of what's happening in the United States right now, it's for the most part race related, right? So, yeah. uh, COVID notwithstanding, uh, <laughs> but if you 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 can't you can't enter a situation unless you're complete. You have a you know a ninja suit on. You can't complete. You can't enter a situation and hide your race. So if you enter in, into a situation people are humans are humans they're going to automatically prejudge you on what side of the fence you lie and if you're a, a if you're a friendly or an ally or a foe you know just with a glance right so yeah. you need to be aware of that tension that's happening right now it's this is not like documenting you know a, a beached whale that showed up in santa monica or something it's it's you know you if you enter into a situation like that whether you like it or not you are now part of the story just because you, you know, because of your skin color, unfortunately. So you exactly. have to take those extra special precautions on top of that, just to not even precautions, just have the knowledge and the understanding, like Olivier said, of what the history is and what's going on so that you're not entering into a situation and putting yourself unnecessarily in harm's way, which is, you know, negates the whole thing of going there in the first place if you don't make it out. Right. So. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, there you is know. Uh, secrets, actually. Tons of photographers that maybe look at this uh, live are, um, you know, uh, wildlife photographer. It ju just like the same. If you don't know the wildlife, you won't take any picture if you don't know where the birds are, um, how to interact with an elephant or something like that. You, you'll be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, if you're yeah. not lucky, you'll be in trouble. And if you're, if you're lucky, you won't see anything. Okay, and you, you came back to your room with no picture, actually. So it's the same for everything, okay? Yes. When you go to your friends or 
you have to know those people, know how they live, and be respectful of what they are. Okay, no matter yeah. who they are. So yeah, no, you that's, have to that's, yeah. in any. In, in, I'm I'm sorry because I have tons of. I talk too much. <laughs> you, you can you can dance. Okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to be an expert in economy, in politics, in geography, in wildlife, in everything. So a photographer is an expert. An expert. Okay. If you want to be a witness yep. of something, you have to know it. If you don't know it, just drop your camera and do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's 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 a really good point. Is you know, for for those that want to get into this and want to use their their photography for documenting or, or doing anything, understanding your subject matter is so important. And like you said, that doesn't matter what what type and style of photography you're doing or really anything you're doing in life. Understanding. What, what it is you're doing and, and having that, that grasp to view it from different angles is, is actually, I think, a really good life lesson. Not just photography, yeah. that's an amazing life lesson. You know, put, not, not necessarily putting yourself in someone else's shoes, it's because it's, that's, that's such an overused phrase, but understanding the purpose of things and, and taking the time to do it. And, and just like you said, Olivier, if, if you don't understand those things, maybe put the camera down and learn about those things that you're going into understand mm -hmm. what the root causes are or try to understand that before jumping you know feet first into something like this um now to to, to pivot a bit because this is this this isn't this conversation is is one like, like i said that i've been looking forward to since we first started having the idea about wanting to to host a conversation like this but there's a lot of, of gear enthusiasts that watch um, these streams and, and as photographers, you know, we were just talking about it before. It's the same with the motorcycles, you know. We love gear. We, we love equipment. We love, you know, just the kind of whole culture of collecting cameras in, in a lot of cases. Um, so to shift to some of that, because there's there's a couple questions we've got from the um, the viewers. I uh, will we'll, we'll uh, start it out with a little bit of a lighter one. Um, so, when when you're out photographing, um, do you guys find yourselves switching lenses often? Do you stick to one lens? Do you carry multiple bodies? You know what what does your kit look like if you're going out for this again this style of photography? <laughs> Uh, let's let's start with uh, uh, Olivier. Okay, um, <laughs> we had this conversation just previously before the live and uh, about motorcycle, but it's quite the same. Actually, there is a right to a right drop, you know, and uh, there is a right motorcycle for the right ride, you know. So it's difficult to answer. If, if I go to shoot uh, for a, a magazine like Geographic magazine or something like that, if I go to uh, South Africa or something like that. Of course, I need a certain kind of tools. If I go to a riot, I need something that is more convenient, smaller, faster, because I have to to use my hand. If I if I have to uh, you know escape or if I have to move very fast and everything, so I need something. I know that Frederick used the G9, also, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you, and S1. This is one of my preferred cameras to make G9 because it's very fast. Okay, and it's very small actually. And uh, to answer your questions, I use something like uh, uh, all the photographer in the world, a twenty four seventies. It's quite enough in those situations because you don't want to change your lens because uh, in those situations there is gas, there is paper gas. The paper gas it's uh, it's it's hell actually because it, it's going to destroy your your lens or your your sensor and everything. Uh, your eyes, uh, everything. Okay, and um, you, there is water also because there is a, a big gun water, and uh, you know to everything. So you don't yeah. want to change your lens in those situations. You don't have time anyway. The time you change your lens, you can uh, receive something on your head, or something like that. You can miss a move or something. So just be very efficient. Okay, and by the way, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, technical purpose. If you're a photojournalist, your, the picture you are going to take, if you have the change to uh, sell it to somebody, it will be print on a magazine at the maximum, so A4 size, maximum. 
A4 size is 8 million pixels. Okay, so you can take a picture with anything up to 8 million pixels and it, use, it could be printed in a magazine or in a newspaper. So you don't care about million pixels, you just care about something efficient because your safety is the first thing you have to think about it. Okay, safety and, and, and being efficient. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's awesome, yeah. So, uh, uh, Frederick, what about you? What's, what, how, how would you approach that? that, uh, you know, lens choice thing. Yeah, yeah, I think, it, you know, it depends. Like Olivier said, it depends on the, the assignment and what you're shooting. So it's the right tool for the right job. Um, that said, though, like in rolling back the clock to military, when I was in the military, there was the, uh, it was, there was the concept of you need to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't OK. I'm just going out to take pictures of this kind of stuff. So I know that 50 mil will probably do it, you know, and I can get it, get in and get out. Um, you had to be ready for unknown events. Right. <laughs> so and there was no option of being able to come back with and say, well, you know, I would have got the shot, but I left my <laughs> 7200 at home. So, which meant you had to load out, right? And then there was redundancy as well. So you needed to bring gear and then backup gear. And back then we were shooting film. So multiple <laughs> multiple film emulsions for different times of day or night shooting. And then batteries for the flash. And then on top of all that, your weapons, right? <laughs> so, you had to, you know, so you had a lot of stuff. And that was just the still photographers. The video guys had even more stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so it depends. Like for me, like fast forward to today, um, things have changed, right? So back then you had this giant palette full of stuff that you needed just to do your job. Today, in a lot of ways, you can do all that with just a smartphone for the most part and still come away with some amazing images. Um, if I'm going out to shoot something and I need the pixels, my choice is usually uh, this guy. So this is my my S1, Lumix S1, um, and it's got a 50 mil loner lens on there, but it's got the, the amazing 50 millimeter lens on there, which is, you know, it's got some sort of unicorn dust in it. So hey, I've got that thing. and. And then my my I love that camera. It's just you know it's it's a purpose camera. So I bring it when I need all those pixels, or if I'm shooting models or some, you know I need that that heft. Uh, but for the the rest of the time, it's the G9 usually with a smaller lens or two lenses in the bag, you know like a. It, a zoom lens or a fixed focal length lens is what I'll take out with me. I travel really light. The bag that I normally take with me has a G9 in it. It's a Peak Design bag with a G9 in it, uh, a couple of lenses, depending on what's happening that day, um, and a drone. You know, I carry around a, a little Mavic Mini to, to, you know, get that shot. And that's, you know, there's a, a couple of other bits and baubles in there, but for the most part, that's all you need because I'm, I, I don't want to be encumbered by a bunch of stuff and stuff brings decisions, you know, making decisions about, oh, which lens should I shoot that with? If you take that out of the, out of the, the equation, then it's just, okay, what's my camera? And we'll figure it out in post. Boom, you click, 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 and get the shot. So yeah, I, I, I agree with Olivia, you know, travel light, travel fast and light enough to be safe. The other piece of that is, you know, just to, just to draw a line back to the previous conversation about safety, is if you're that photographer and you're heading out into an area that's unknown with one of these jobbers here, which might represent the annual income for someone, right? And the only barrier to them getting a year's salary is you and maybe hitting you over the head and taking that. And now, you know, and it could even be like, it's either hit Frederick over the head and take that thing or feed my daughter tonight, which, which am I going to do, right? So... You have to keep in mind that that people are, you know, they're humans, and you have that that level of empathy that don't go into an impoverished situation or a situation where you know, that's questionable economically, and bring thousands and thousands of dollars there with you and go in alone. That is like a juicy morsel for someone. So keep that in mind. I know a lot of photographers that will they won't buy really slick looking expensive camera bags. They get the cheapest most beat up camera bag that they can find and then dirty it up even further and then put duct tape on their cameras to make them look damaged and cheap even if it's brand new and that goes in the bag just to bring the the level of 
that guy has expensive gear with him down to a manageable level. So there's some stuff to keep in mind. Yeah, no, that's 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 definitely really good points. You know, so so we're we're coming up on a, we actually just rolled over into the hour, but um, I want to ask you guys one last question. Um, so you know, we've we've talked a lot about obviously the challenges and the the potential dangers in photojournalism and you know what what people need to be prepared for with it but we didn't really talk about much in the way of you know someone who's going out there and actually capturing these images what the actual you know kind of workflow would be after that so you know if you're out on assignment how do you take the images that you've got, call them and send them? Do you even call them? Uh, or, you know, if you're actually out there going out in the first time, how would you approach getting images to a news agency? Um, let's start with um, uh, Olivier on this one. Um, I don't know if it's going to be helpful because we have a totally different workflow in France, I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, in France, it's if we talk about the demonstration by itself, okay, there is a demonstration in a certain part of the city, okay, and around it, uh, just after the police uh, dispositive, you know, there is trucks um, with um, that belongs to uh, the channel for the video or um, the redaction and everything. So you just have to go to the trucks and say look, the picture you got if it's interesting for them. Uh, by the way, we can talk about it. Uh, we talked about um, uh, if we uh, uh, ought to take the right picture, if we have to be engaged in our picture and everything. Don't think about it because uh, the guy who's going to buy it, he shoots for you anyway. If it don't, uh, um, if, if, if it's not uh, comply to the, the goal, uh, the redaction uh, want to show he won't buy it anyway okay so uh, uh, don't worry just take your picture and they make the choice by the way uh, you have to know that it's very cheap you not you're never gonna be rich with photo journalism okay never okay yep. it's very a ridiculous amount of money even if you get the the picture of uh, uh, of the year you know because by the way, the picture of the year, you, you know it, but later, actually, because the people we choose if it's the right picture or not. So, yeah, it has, it has to be shown, and they're going to buy it, maybe 30 or 40 bucks the picture or something like that. So, you want to be rich. If you want to be a photojournalist, be prepared, okay? Um, there is few disciplines of photography that makes money. It's probably art photographies, and, uh, uh, and that's it, I guess. That's, that's it. <laughs> And if you're lucky, by the way, so um, some of wedding soup, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. wedding, yeah, depends uh, the kind of relation you have and everything. So yeah, it's very difficult to make some some money with with uh, with photography. So I have just an advice about it: just take pleasure making photographies, okay? Because if you don't make money, at least you have pleasure to make it, okay? So that's it. But, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> the process to take a picture. This is it, actually. Just go on the website of uh, um, your favorite newspaper, take the the, the, the the mail address, you find it very easily on the internet, okay? the right mail address. And when you think that you have the right picture, you just send it, just very low resolution, uh, of course, uh, and you send it, and if they like it, they're going to buy it. But uh, you won't change your gear with one picture, I can assume that. Yeah. Then, yeah. No, no that's yeah that's 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 really cool i know and and just like we were saying before there's so many different caveats to the way this works for some people you know the, there's a couple people in the in the chat you know talking about how you can pitch the idea to photo editors things like that there's there's definitely different methods for it um but i think like that that overarching point is also like this is not a style of photography that's going to get you rich. This is this is not 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 where you're going to make your money. <laughs> Having something else is 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 going to be core there. Um, Unless you make art. So I'm preparing a book with all the picture I took for five years, and maybe this I won't be millionaire. I mean, but, uh, um, this is m 
is this going to be more efficient than sailing one picture to a redaction or something like that? So you can yeah. you can just collect information, make a book, make an exposition, show your your, your stuff in the gallery or something like that. And uh, this is a good way to make live photo journalism. Okay. Yeah. To, but uh, yeah. sailing, I, I don't know the experience of Frederick. Do, do, do you have another experience in the United States? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, is it, well, I, I'd set the stage on answering that is that I am not an active photojournalist, like we said at the beginning. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I defer to you, Olivier, to, <laughs> to fill in the blanks on that. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would just throw on there real quick that, you know, photojournalism as an art form is, is if you're going into it with the motivations of, of getting rich or making money or becoming, you know, that like Olivia said, that is a pipe dream. You're not going to make a gazillion dollars and buy your your next Tesla, you know, <laughs> doing photojournalism. So re-examine your choices or your thought process if your main motivation is money. If your main motivation is you just have this intrinsic desire to tell stories or a particular story about an area because you feel like how come no one knows about this, right? I need to I need to tell the story, you know, through my eyes and let people know what, what see what I see, or else I'm going to be burdened with this, you know. I should have said something back in 2020 when I had the chance. So if you if that's your motivation, which is pure storytelling, pure photojournalism, and then everything else sort of falls in after that, then I think you'll be much more successful than going in with a spreadsheet and saying, you know, what I think I can make, you know. 30 grand if I go do this story on that, you know, over there in the Yucatan Peninsula, and then I might make some more money if I go over into, you know, this area. Don't do that. It has to be emotionally driven, I think, or else you're just sort of setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, like one of my, when, when I first got into photography, one of the, you know, kind of catalysts for me to really want to focus more on street documentary, you know, the, the, that style of photography was seeing uh, uh, Robert Frank's Americans because it was exactly mm -hmm. that. It's a documentation across the country. And it, it, it really, I think, especially now, I think if you, for those that haven't um, heard of Robert Frank or looked at, at the book, um, The Americas, take a look at it. It, it, it's documenting across the country, um, it, the United States, uh, a, a challenging time. And it was a very different style of photography at the time that a lot of people didn't like magazines in a lot of places didn't really accept his photography. But that idea of documenting the world around you, seeing what's in front of you, and then ultimately it becoming a book as documentation was really, I think, one of the cooler paths that those images would have taken because to to Olivia your your point before the news media or the magazine or whatever that is there may not want the image it may not fit what their direction is but mm -hmm. cult like like creating and cultivating all of those images in your experiences and publishing them in a book going through that process and actually using that as a method i think is is a very solid way for someone that may get frustrated or or wants to get into this that that can be a really great outlet for someone to to get into this and document the world and then share their view with with the rest of society that is you know, on, on, on top of that i think just to just to you know add another dimension to it i think you know, there there's the traditional photojournalism gatekeepers that were okay. Like Olivia was saying, you know, I send my, my image in and then if they like it, you know, it was basically sending an image on spec and then if they like it, they'll purchase it. That's one way. But if, if you know, you go back to the, to the idea of shooting on a motion and telling stories, then we're in 2020 going into 2021, right? There's, there's no gatekeepers in terms of you getting your story out. You can use YouTube, you can use TikTok, you can use Twitter, yeah, you can build a website with a gallery, you can narrate your photos. There's no restriction on you telling those stories. And then from there, you know, printed media could come out or some some news organization could see the work and say, yeah, we want to license this set of images for a story we're doing in that same vein. 
but there's nothing in the old days it was i have this roll of film i think it's good let me send it out to a bunch of people and hope i get bites now you can publish it yourself and then you know let the bites come and the the, the benefit of that is if the if your images or the content gets traction organically then that's that's a feather in your hat when you want wider distribution from a larger news entity because you can say hey this shot is viral it's already got you know 20,000 or 2 million views or and look at all these comments you can license it if you want x y and z versus please sir you know license my image so yeah. yeah it's it's interesting it's interesting where it's an interesting area we're in now in terms of photojournalism and access to people and getting stories and 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 information out to the masses yeah totally agree yeah. totally agree this, this is mm -hmm. everybody might keep in the, in his mind that photography is an art okay there is no professional of photography there is only artist but if you want to be an artist and if you want your photography be an art you have to show them no matter what you want to use to show them you have to show them because art exists in the eyes of the people who look at it and that's it so instagram as frederick said is right is totally right okay don't be uh, passive. Just don't wait that somebody says, okay, I love what you do. I'm going to publish it. No, publish it by yourself. Be an artist. Mm -hmm. Be a Van Gogh. It was, you know, you take your camera, yep. you express yourself, and you show your picture, and you share it with the people, and that's it. Yeah. And then you are big end someday, maybe <laughs> a well-known artist or a photojournalist because someone will come to you and say oh those are your pictures so i want to pay you to make those pictures so show your yeah. show your work be an artist very yeah. cool very cool I, I i i think that's 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 a great note to um to end this week's stream on um go out and be an artist you know um yeah. so for everyone watching, I want to thank everyone for joining us on this uh, live stream. I know we didn't get to to everyone's questions on there, um, but definitely keep them coming. Um, now, for for Frederick and Olivier, where can where can people follow your work and find you guys online, or when we're actually back out into the real world? Uh, where can they find you guys, um, Frederick? How about you first? Uh, yeah, my my site is thisweekinphoto.com, so all roads lead there. You can contact me through that site or, you know, subscribe to our podcast or our newsletter or our community, etc. It's all at thisweekinphoto.com. Cool. How about you, yeah, uh, you can, uh, Olivia? Yeah, Instagram. Uh, I, I have a website. Uh, I must work on it for, for five years now, so don't worry. I, I'm lazy, you know? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Instagram. Most of my work are Instagram, and you can find me in uh, maybe 89 galleries in 25 countries uh, right now. Because I'm also wow. a art photographer, you know. <laughs> so um, that's it. So you can find it. even in the United States there is galleries in uh, New Jersey, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, I guess something like that. So if you if you look at it, you find it. Very very cool. Now for for those that are uh, watching us, we will all uh, put links down in the. Uh, uh, description for this video um, once we're done here. Um, with that, I want to thank you guys, uh, Frederick and Olivier, for, for taking the time to join on with me. Um, like I said, this this was one of my more, you know, kind of really exciting uh, conversations for Lumix Live. Um, your your experiences and your, your background, I think, is, is one that a lot of people uh, can, can benefit from. Uh, for those of you that, that joined us and, and enjoyed this, uh, this talk on Linux Live, thank you. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the Panasonic Linux uh, cameras channel here. Uh, we do these kinds of events weekly. In fact, we have another one happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern with uh, one of our UK ambassadors, Ross. Uh, about pet photography, so a little bit lighter of a topic than today. Uh, but uh, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out the work from Olivier and Frederick. And we will see everybody tomorrow.